The brush settings panel and the brushes panel are two different panels that you can use to choose and modify brushes. In this video, I want to emphasize that the brush settings panel is the much better option than the brushes panel, because as we learned in a previous video, different brushes have different intents and you could be painting with a color and switch to another paint brush that you choose via the brushes panel and then all of a sudden nothing happens or instead of applying paint the brush starts smudging and so I want to make sure that you understand that brushes don't have to be for painting they could be for for smudging or for erasing and if you choose a brush that is intended for erasing you will never be able to paint with that brush but all of the settings that you adjust via the brush settings panel will only add to the current brush that you have selected. So you could take a brush that can paint and modify the settings using the brush settings panel to create a custom brush that does really cool things. So let's jump back to Photoshop. We have that same document open. In this case, I've made sure that it's blank so we can play around with it. And I would like you to open the brushes panel and the brush settings panel. The brushes panel should be open if you have the painting workspace set. So just open it and make it bigger so that you can see it. And then go to the window menu and choose brush settings. You can also launch the brush settings from the workspace. So whichever way works for you, make sure that you open the brush settings panel and the brushes panel. We've already learned about the brushes panel. This is the same panel that you see on your options bar if you activate the flyout menu. I want to reemphasize that some brushes are not intended to paint. So if I select this chalk square and I start painting and it paints, that works out really well. But sometimes you will find a brush that does not do what you want it to do. Let's see if we can find one real quick. Of course, all of the options are, let's do, I think it was wet media. You'll notice that there's a lot more options on the brush panel. It's not showing you everything when you do that flyout menu. So there is a benefit to coming on here and selecting a brush. However, you should always make sure that when you select a brush, you look at the tools panel or the options bar, make sure that the brush tool is still selected. If it switches to the smudge tool or to the eraser tool, that means that the brush is not a painting brush. Now let's say that you find a brush that you like but you want to modify it and you want to change it and customize it and make it your own. That's when you would jump to the brush settings panel. So if you jump over to the brush settings panel, there are a number of options. There's too many options for me to go through, so I'm not gonna go through all of them, but what I would encourage you to do is to click through and experiment with them, similarly to the way that we experiment with um, layer effects. We don't go through every single setting, but they're there for you to play with. And so right now, this brush that it's selected, it only has smoothing settings that are set. But we could also change scattering, texture, dual brush, color dynamics, noise, wet edges. I'm a fan of the wet edges. When you paint with wet edges, it kind of makes the edges darker in the inside, um, a different intensity. And if you have the right brush, you can make that look like it's a neon glow. You can add color dynamics. There's a hue jitter. If you increase the hue jitter as you paint, the color that you are applying every time you paint is going to be slightly different. And the amount that it's different is based on the hue jitter. So if I make it really low, the colors will change, but they'll never go too far from the original. If I make the hue jitter 100, I will get completely random colors as I'm painting. I'm gonna do Commander Control A and then Commander Control X to clear that out. Um, you can also have brightness jitter or saturation jitter. Let's put the hue jitter back to zero and change the saturation jitter. So now every time you paint, it will paint at a different saturation or intensity. We'll get rid of that as well. Um, let's take a look at some other ones like texture. You can change the depth of your texture. You can change, let's choose this one here. And now as you paint, you can paint with texture that's applied over the top. You can scale the texture. You can increase the depth of the texture. This brush isn't adapting well to texture, so let's turn that one off. Um, you can add noise to your brush, um, which as you paint will add some variation in the, the fine texture of the brush, depending on what brush you have selected. You can kind of see it right here at the end. After I move my cursor, look right here. 
and you can see how there's texture that has been applied within the brush. Uh, there's also shape dynamics. So the size jitter will allow the brush that you are painting with to be bigger or smaller. And you can, now you can see the, um, the noise that we added on the outside as you're painting. Um, you can do a number of different things. And so what I would encourage you to do is click through and play around with the different options that are available to you and create custom brushes this way.